Well, Iraqi Prime Minister warns that Baghdad would consider any foreign troop deployment to Iraq a, quote, act of aggression. Haydar al Abadi says the government has not requested any foreign ground troops from any countries. Abadi on Tuesday also stressed that Iraq does not need foreign ground troops. His remarks are viewed as a response to U.S. Army Colonel Steve Warren, who said around 100 special operations troops will be deployed to Iraq. According to Warren, the new troops will assist in the campaign against Daesh in Iraq. The commandos will join the 3,500 U.S. soldiers already deployed in the country. The U.S.-led campaign against ISIL in Iraq and Syria has been criticised for ineffectiveness. To discuss this story further, we're joined via Skype from Washington by Webster Griffin Tutley. He's an author and historian. Good to have you with us here on Press TV Webster. So, did the US Commander in Chief forget to coordinate with Iraqis before announcing their intention to have another couple of hundred special ops personnel visit their country? Or do you think it's because Iraq has no say in its about its sovereignty at the moment? Well, I certainly believe that Iraq should have the, uh, the final say. But I think we're dealing with a kind of a planned provocation here. And the provocateur is Ashton Carter, the Secretary of Defense of the United States, the boss of the Pentagon. I think he's a troublemaker. We have to remember that this government is highly factionalized and that we have warmonger cliques and we have other people who are more loyal to the constitutional chain of command. When I first heard Ashton Carter make that announcement to a House uh, uh, committee, House of Representatives here in the, in the Capitol, I actually wondered, had he cleared that with Obama? In other words, is that just Ashton Carter doing what he wanted to do? Because normally the president would make a, uh, a statement like that. Now, as soon as Carter talked about sending more forces, Prime Minister Rabadi said, we don't need them, and you have to ask us. Then, uh, today, We've had this Colonel Steve Watson, who is the spokesperson for the U.S. operation in Iraq, repeating these same um, demands, in other words, for a unilateral deployment without consultation. And it looks to me like that clique is attempting to cause trouble. And the clique I'm referring to is the General David Petraeus, uh, General John Allen, and probably Ashton Carter now. We can count him uh, as one of these people that they're, they're trying to embarrass uh, Prime Minister Abadi. Now, if I could, behind all this, yesterday in the Washington Post, we had a very interesting front page article that Iraqis believe that the United States is secretly allied to ISIS and supports ISIS. And they quote uh, some interesting people saying, uh, we've seen the US delivering water, ammunition to ISIS. Um, and the Washington Post, uh, of course, uh, says that uh, nobody believes it, or Steve Warren says, nobody in the West buys this, but they claim that it's been put uh, out as a lie by Iran. Now, I'm in the West, and I think the charge that the U.S. is playing footsie with ISIS is absolutely true. It's based on fact. It's not a conspiracy theory. Washington Post says the only people who believe this are Iran, and Iraqis who are, they say, racist against the United States. Uh, one a commander that the Washington Post quotes says, ISIS now is so weak that if the US pulled out support, ISIS would collapse. And I think that's actually true. We've just had uh, another reference today in a White House briefing to the famous 98-mile Jarablus corridor and how that needs to be closed. But I, I would just also offer what's possibly going on here. We know that Saudi Arabia and Turkey bribe people. And I think there's some uh, possibility that what the US is doing to support ISIS is actually people who are running a criminal operation on the side. In other words, they're getting bribed either by Saudi Arabia or Turkey or both to try to keep ISIS going in some of these areas. It's a kind of a catch-22, if you've ever read that, right? Where people who are waging war also engage in a criminal uh, uh, enterprise. So that's, that's what I see. Well, Webster, very briefly, if you may, the Iraqi popular forces have pledged that they will combat any US troops deployed to their country 
With Abadi's comments today, what consequences are awaiting the American forces? And then if these consequences do actually occur, is it something that has been called for? Well, uh, as you believe, I believe you mentioned, there are pr probably 3,300 U.S. forces already there. Uh, there are some advisors. There are special forces who work with the Kurdish uh, forces, both Peshmerga on the Syrian forces. side and, and on the Iraqi side. Peshmer well, Peshmerga, PKK, and YPG, with the YPG being the most um, uh, effective in my, in my uh, estimation. So. Um, I think what, what Abadi is saying is that he wants to be asked, uh, and he should be asked. He, I, I read in what he says, he's not saying we never want any help from anybody, but he's saying that he wants to be asked, and I would ask him, and I would do that confidentially. I would not make these announcements in the way that Ashton Carter did. The party that I represent is the Tax Wall Street Party. We have been calling for the firing of Ashton Carter for months. He's simply a bungler. He's a, a, a kind of neocon, utopian pedant. He's Dr. Strangelove. And he's as, as associated with this policy of phony war, that they pretend to wage war against ISIS and they don't really do it. And that's a fact. That's not a conspiracy. So the answer would be purge the people from the government here, starting with Carter, who are devoted to maintaining ISIS. We have to remember General David Petraeus is the founder of ISIS, right back in uh, the days of Zarqawi in 2006. So Petraeus looks at that terror organization as his baby. He wants to keep it. Uh, other governments should refuse to, uh, to deal with somebody like Ashton Carter, who's so compromised with that policy. Thank you very much. It was great to talk to you. Webster Griffin Tarpney, author and historian, joining us from Washington, D.C.